Simon Reed says, in part of thing, what is your opinion on accommodating resistance with bands or change? I think it'd be great for strength curves and good for helping a bar pass. Do you use this with your athletes? Never. No, absolutely no. never. So there's no. probably a couple of reasons why we wouldn't use uh, bands and chains in training. One of them might argue it is not good for bar pass. And there's kind of yeah. the term of, so we're big on a lot of volume, work capacity stuff for powerlifters for, for in their strength training that they are spend too much time being too specific. However, there's when we're looking at our specific movements in terms of our squat bench and deadlift we mostly want to keep these exclusively to what we want them to be in competition and then everything else can just be as varied as possible so our assistance stuff for example can be as varied and as wide as possible as you want it to be but when we we were looking at our main movements our sport specific movements we don't ever want to change these and this will go for the same weight of thing but it's the same for a squat bench and deadlift so we don't ever want to be changing these we want to keep these as consistent as possible as repeatable as possible so that's one of the main reasons we wouldn't use them. One of the other reasons is it's very hard to progress using bands and chains. So we are big fans of block progression. So uh, I want to talk about linear progression later in a different video, but we won't talk about it now. But essentially, most of our training principles work around the idea of block progression. And one of those things is, and it's a main issue most people have in their training, we see with a loads of powerlifters, loads of amateur powerlifters, loads of amateur strength training athletes, is they have no direction and they're not progressing to somewhere. So we do loads of consultation calls with people. People just call us up. You can see it on the website. Uh, call us up for an hour for each conversation, talk with the program. And you see it everywhere online as well, is loads of people just don't have a plan and a destination. They're never moving through different bands of stuff. So we'll always see people talk about, uh, I've been doing five by five for the last six months and I'm stuck on 75 kilos or something like that. Uh, what do I do now? Should I do like more sets of five or do I take more trend? So that's not what you want to be doing. You want to be moving through places and we're reliably progressing with something. And so when we use bands and chains is we're not really sure what weight we're using. I know you can weigh the chains, but it's different at every degree above the ground we get. So they're not very repeatable. They're very hard to progress with. I know you can use the same bands and chains, but you can also just add more weight and chain sets and reps, which are much more reliable. Also, there's an issue with them being how much time do you really have in your training? How often can you really put them into your training when you could be doing something a lot more productive that would get you a lot better? You could do low bar bands or chain squats, or you could just do more sets of high bar squats and get a lot more bang for your buck and get a lot more, more transfer over. I'm not saying there's going to be going to negative transfer over. Maybe if they work for you, that's all great. No problem with that. I don't really care. We don't use them personally. We're not going to try to take people down who are using them, but they just aren't the most useful thing you can do. Also, with bands, if you're using them on things like squats and benching in particular, actually deadlifting too, you could be looking at compromised positions and we could be looking at putting more pressure on our joints in less ideal positions when we don't want to be doing. So I would say for those reasons, I'm out. What's that from? Is that Dragon's Den? Dragon's Den, yeah. Yeah. 